Greetings everyone, in this video I'm going to be demonstrating how WMI can be used to perform stealthy remote file uploads as well as establishing persistence on a remote system using the WMI eventing system. In order to do this, I'm going to be using this PowerShell script that I wrote to perform this exact function, and this script is available in a link in the video description. Now, it requires a fair bit of setup, especially if the systems being used are non-domain joined. For one thing, you need to have a file called password.txt, which I have instructions to create here, and you need to do some configuration of the local or remote systems, which I describe here. So, I'm going to run through the script and then demonstrate how it works. Here I have the computer that I'm connecting to, which is just a Windows 10 VM that I'm using, the username that I have here, and then the file that I'm going to be uploading and creating persistence for. In this case, this is just the old school Windows 7 style calculator. So here I'm establishing my remote connection, my remote session to my system by using the password here and then uh, creating a remote PowerShell session. And this has a few different functions. First function it has here is called display. What this does is this will show all event filters, event consumers, and filter to consumer bindings on the system. This is the method that we're going to be using to establish our persistence. The create method here is the thing that actually establishes the persistence. By creating a new filter, a new command line event consumer to run our file, and a new filter to consumer binding to bind the two. The filter that we're creating is a standard WMI startup filter, which is actually taken from PowerSploit, where it looks for system uptime, oops, where it looks for system uptime between 200 and 320 seconds, and then it will invoke our file. Finally, I have actually not finally, I have a delete function here which will simply undo what I didn't create. And then here is the C2 method that will do the actual file upload. And the way this works is by reading in a file, converting it to base64, storing it as a string, and then creating a remote WMI connection to the system, creating a new class and a new property, and then saving the base64 encoded file data as a property of that class on the remote system. And then finally, writing it out from that property, from that class, into the path that we designate, thus providing a very stealthy method of file upload. So, okay, let's begin. I'm going to run display first, just to show that this is the standard filter to consumer and consumer binding that are present in basically all Windows systems. This is just the standard legitimate stuff. So now, I'm going to run create to establish my new uh, filter consumer and filter to consumer binding. I've noticed that the create method can take up to a couple of minutes the first time it runs on a new system. So don't be surprised if that happens when you try this. And just to show you that it works, I'm going to run display again. And now you can see that I have my evil filter, evil consumer, and my evil filter to consumer binding. Now I'm going to run C2 to do the actual upload. Now, like I said, the file that I'm uploading here is C Windows 32 Calc 1. Before I run this, I just want to show my VM, and you'll see in the System32 directory that there is no Calc 1 file here. Okay, now I'll run this. And this will just take a second. Okay, that's done. So now if I go back to my VM, you will notice that the file is here, and in fact I can run it, and it is in fact the Windows calculator, so my file upload worked. Now, I can also run sysinternals auto runs and look at WMI here, and you'll notice that my evil consumer shows up, and in fact you can see the actual query that my consumer is set to run, and the file that my consumer is set to invoke. Thus, you can in fact detect this method even as stealthy as it is. Additionally, I can look at the event viewer here, and I can refresh my log, and if I look for event 5861, I can see the creation of my evil filter and consumer, and again, this shows the precise filter condition that I established, and the fact that it's a command line event consumer, and that this is what it is set to run. Now the way you get here is by looking at your event viewer, and then going to Applications and Services Logs, Microsoft, Windows, 
building line activity and then operational and the event ID is 5861. So there you go. That is how WMI can be used to establish persistence as well as perform remote file uploads on a system to which you already have administrator credentials. Thanks for watching.